Oh, hi there. Today, I want to shine some light on the pieces of lost media that often go overlooked. So here's my pick for the top 10 lesser known pieces of lost media. Now for number nine, I can't decide if this actually counts as lost media. So let me know in the comments below. Thunder Mask was a Japanese TV show similar to Ultraman that aired between 1972 and 1973, based on the manga by animation icon Osamu Tezuka, perhaps best known in the West for creating Astro Boy and Kimba the White Lion. Of the show's 26 episodes, only 7 complete episodes and 1 incomplete episode can be found online. The episodes we do have are absolutely wild. The 12th episode ends with Thunder Mask being literally crucified, only to be resurrected in the next episode. And the entire series ends with Thunder Mask being turned into a star in the sky. Despite how entertaining the show is, its obscurity is largely due to legal disputes over who owns the show's rights. It's also rumored that Tezuka disapproved of the adaptation of his manga and requested the show be destroyed. While it is documented in the lost media community that Skrillex has many lost songs and a colossal list of unreleased songs, what is often overlooked is that the artist has an entire lost album. In 2011, while performing in Milan, Italy, two laptops and two hard drives were stolen from his hotel room containing all the work for his upcoming album, The Voltage. Skrillex confirmed the robbery in a Facebook post stating, just gonna set it straight. I had two laptops and both of my hard drives stolen out of my hotel room in Milan, Italy last month. On these laptops and drives were all the project files of Skrillex. All gone now. Also, I had a new album that is now gone too. I spent a week pulling my hair out, but now I'm just focusing on the future and remaking my album. Very little is known about the actual album. Supposedly, it was meant for a 2012 release, may have contained up to 15 tracks. The title track, Voltage, was leaked but has never been released, and some of the tracks were reused for his Bangarang EP, which was released nine months after the album was stolen. Some other common rumors are that his remix of Lady Gaga's Born This Way, titled Died This Way, was recovered from backups and released. Some claim that the thieves who stole the album were caught but had already wiped the devices. Skrillex would not release a full album until 2014 with Recess. Based on the 1946 comic strip of the same name, Sazai-san is the world's longest running animated TV series with a new episode nearly every Sunday since the show aired in 1969, leading to over 2,500 episodes. The show is centered around family-friendly, relatable plots that are heavily based in nostalgia for Japanese tradition. While the show is widely known in Japan, it is virtually unheard of in the US due to the creator of the series, Machiko Hasegawa, refusing to create merchandise, toys, or even a home release for the series. Because of this, most episodes only air once, have never been officially translated into other languages, and any attempt to catalog the series into one source has been consistently taken down. This has led to a massive amount of the show being lost. It's hard to even estimate a number, but it's probably upwards of 2,000 lost episodes. There is hope though. In recent years, 271 episodes have become available for streaming on Amazon Prime. Hopefully, this will pave the way for a complete release of the series. The Wayside School TV special was a live action movie based on the Wayside School book series particularly the first book in the series, Sideways Stories from Wayside School. 
On copies of this book, as early as the 80s, a sticker can be found on the cover claiming the book was also an ABC TV special. The existence of this lost TV special was further confirmed in a tweet by an actor who appeared in the movie. This special, however, does not seem to be connected in any way to the 2005 animated Wayside movie or the 2007 animated TV series. This live action version of the Wayside story was meant to be a pilot for a TV show that was sadly never picked up. Rommel the Reindeer is an animated children's show that aired on the BBC in 1996. The series is a spin-off of three different Christmas TV specials that Rommel the Reindeer appeared in. These shows were Santa and the Tooth Fairies, Santa's First Christmas, and Tales of the Tooth Fairies. Of the 13 episodes of Rommel the Reindeer, only six can be found online, with five being released on VHS and an additional episode making its way to YouTube. There does appear, however, to be a French DVD of all 13 episodes, but these episodes have never made their way online. The existence of this DVD and various fan pages detailing each lost episode's plot leads me to believe this series is not totally lost and might be found with a little more digging from the lost media community. Ultima series is among the most important in gaming, paving the way for RPGs in the 80s and being highly influential to series like Dragon Quest and Final Fantasy, with some going as far as to call the Ultima series the most important in gaming. But the eighth entry in the series, Pagan, was not well received, leading to its expansion, the ironically named Lost Veil, vale, to be cancelled at the last minute by publisher EA, even though the expansion was completely finished. Most surprisingly though, since the expansion was cancelled in 1994, the game has never been leaked online and is likely lost forever. Today, only screenshots and the game's box art exists, and the expansion is virtually unknown outside of the hardcore fan base. The Lost Game Gathers is perhaps the most perplexing and mysterious entry on this list, with only two screenshots of the game in existence. The title has a Lost Media Wiki entry only two sentences long and doesn't even have enough information to deserve its own dedicated page. This mysterious game is often linked to another game, the title Dweebers which is itself a lost game that only has one promotional image to confirm its existence. Some have theorized that Dweebers might have been renamed to Gathers, due to both games being by the same developer and one of the enemies from Gathers bearing similarities to the characters in the promotional art for Dweebers. But this conspiracy goes one level deeper. Dweebers is also theorized to be in connection with a potential lost game that has perplexed the lost media community for years. The game titled Yeah Yeah Beatus 1. A game so mysterious that it might be deserving of its own video someday. Black the Ripper is a black exploitation film that was possibly never made. Sources claim that it was meant to come out in either 1975 or 1976. The film was written and produced by Frank R. Seletri, a lawyer best known for writing and producing the black exploitation film Blackenstein. Seletri is also notable for his unsolved murder in the 80s at the former home of horror icon Bella Lugosi. Proof that Black the Ripper ever existed comes from a few magazines in the 80s and one modern source claiming they've seen an incomplete version of the movie passed around torrent sites. Here are some possible stills from the movie.
the 1987 point-and-click adventure game Maniac Mansion by legendary developers LucasArts is not an obscure game and is actually a cult classic. But by clicking a certain pixel in the NES version of Maniac Mansion, a keypad will appear. But no matter what combination you put in, the mansion explodes in 30 seconds, leading to a game over, and no one has been able to figure out what this means. Some believe the keypad is a leftover from a promotional deal with Pepsi, where you can find a code on a Pepsi can in-game and lead to real-world prizes. But Pepsi backed out of this. Some claim it's a leftover security measure from the PC port of the game, and some believe it's a lost Easter egg. Whatever it is, the meaning behind this keypad and whatever it was meant to hold is lost. While not the most obscure on this list, this entry is definitely the most absurd. Christopher Columbus was a Japanese shoot-em-up for the Super Nintendo where you control Christopher Columbus, whose mission is to, I quote, free people and restore peace. And of course, you do this by fighting mammoths, dragons, and sea creatures. The game was set to be released in 1993 and was supposedly complete, but the game was canceled for unknown reasons. Miyasawa Entertainment is listed as the game's developer, though the company has no history of game development, only experienced as a game publisher. The game was also known by its alternative title, shown here. This title is a reference to Christopher Columbus's mysterious signature that he started using in 1483. The meaning of this signature is still unknown, and just like the Christopher Columbus shoot-em-up, it is likely lost to time. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what other topics you want me to cover in future videos and subscribe to see more videos like this. This is Mike with All Things Lost. See you soon. Yeah,